Hey there guys and welcome back to Ben 10 Protector of Earth. In the last episode we beat up some plant monsters and now we're going to Seattle. Whoa! That thing is huge! It looks like whatever's been spreading all these plant pods around has taken root at the top of the city. And I'm supposed to fight that? Think of it as revenge for every vegetable you've ever been forced to eat. It's payback time. See, now, I don't really get why they always have kids hating vegetables in cartoons and stuff. I mean, sure, there are pl plenty of vegetables that I don't like either, but I don't have a problem with all vegetables. I mean, I'll pretty much always eat, like, a salad or something. Or tomatoes, or cucumber, or, uh... I don't know, all sorts of beans. Plenty of vegetables that are good eating. Anyway, we are apparently going straight to the Space Needle, where this weird plant thing has taken root, and it looks... It kind of reminds me of that plant boss for Metroid Prime, to be honest. One thing's for sure, this thing was not in the show. I was expecting uh, that evil mushroom from that one episode being behind everything, but nope, apparently it's this thing. Although it does look a lot more like that weird worm thing that crawled out of the null void after Kevin Eleven did a couple episodes ago. Anyway, we need to hit him in the balls. That's right. All the male viewers might experience some problems watching this episode. Some, uh, some sharing of the male pain, so to speak. Anyway, he doesn't seem like he has anything that can even reach me, but don't think my projectiles are doing the job, so I have to rush in, punch him in the balls. And then run away like a little bitch. It's a pretty good battle tactic, though. I mean, if you ever find yourself in a one-on-one -on -one fight with some other guy, just kick him in the balls and run the hell away. Works for me. Then again, I've never actually gone into a physical altercation, and I have no plans to ever get into one if it's up to me, so... Yeah, damn it. Gonna go with Accelerate here because he might have a little more speed which with which I can get in and out a lot quicker. Oh, and now we need cannonballs. Suddenly ramps. Where the hell do those even come from? Why do they have these ramps at the top of the Space Needle? Pretty weird, but bam, whatever. Oh, and now he breaks it, of course. That's property damage, you know, you're damaging one of America's national monuments. And now he's, he gets pink fire breath, which is totally... Like, totally makes sense for a plant monster to have. I don't know, maybe it's like pheromones or something? Anyway, he does have more balls now. All the more balls for us to pop. Oh, that just goes way over my head. Ah, there we go, down he goes again. I'm still cannonball, so let's find a ramp. There's one. Still rolling in the background. Okay, this way, uh, yep, there it is. You just stay there. And boom, that's two. Probably only gonna need one more, because with these boss fights, it's usually like rule of three. You have to do something three times and then they're dead. Anyway, more balls. Doesn't seem like he got any new attacks this time around, though. Yeah, we definitely only need to do it once more, I think. Judged on... Judging the, by the amount of health he still has remaining. Also, it doesn't really seem like he can... Oh, crap. This is bad. Four arms, come on. Make it snappy, or... Yeah, let's just go with Accelerate. Damn, okay, that attack is just... Well, pretty much all of his attacks are nigh undodgeable, except for that one. The beam just completely misses you if you stay near him. And time to switch back to Cannonbolt and seal the deal on this. Just gotta find the last... R oh, there it is. Alright, Cannonbolt, let's do this. Oh, quick time event. Alright, finish him off. How are we gonna do this? Bouncing all around. Kind of reminds me of uh, Cannonbolt's debut episode, where I think he did something similar to some giant tick monster. I, I quite liked that episode. That was a pretty good one. And in we go. And now we're gonna tear him to shreds from the inside out. Uh, wait, he switched to Heat Blast? I thought he couldn't do that. thought Ben couldn't switch from alien to alien directly. Not without the master control, at least, which we don't have. Yeah, sweet! Another on the tricks crystal. Let's see who I've got now. Oh 
Oh yeah, I'm a mean green butt-kicking machine. Of course. That plant monster must have been charged up by Wildvine's DNA. This can't all be a coincidence. Why are all of our bad memories suddenly coming back to haunt us? Unfortunately, the evidence all points to one individual. Why? Why am I surrounded by utter incompetence? I gave up the valuable crystals I stole from the Omnitrix so that the Tennyson boy would be destroyed! And the miserable peons that I so generously entrusted with those crystals are unable to do anything but fail me! You, however, have done well! Retrieving the Null Void Projector was invaluable! Simply return to me the final item I need to complete my plans, and you will have both the Omnitrix and the boy to do with what you will. Okay, so we have all five aliens now, and it turns out Vilgax and Ghost Freak are behind everything. What I don't really understand though is Vilgax complains about all these people he's working with disappointing him, then why doesn't he just do everything himself? I mean, it seems like that kind of defeats the purpose. But whatever, next level. Yeah, All these rotting plants reek! Look who's talking! Don't you remember our talk about forearms needing four times the deodorant? <laughs> well, that gives me no clue what I'm supposed to be doing in this level. Also, why the hell was he just being forearms in the RV? That's just weird. Like, why would he just turn into forearms when there's no fighting to be done or anything? But yeah, just like after we unlocked Cannonball, this is basically just a beat up as many enemies as you can level. I guess it's supposed to help you get used to Wildvine. And he's pretty good. He's got great range on all of his attacks. Pretty powerful as well, although I think the power is kind of irrelevant, because I think they all kind of hit just as hard. Just Wildvine's reach is really good, I'm quite liking that. That spinning move especially, that is a good move. He jumps pretty high as well. Much faster airspeed than forearms as well. Kind of getting my ass kicked there, but uh, spin him all around. Deals with him pretty easily. Oh jeez. That's a lot of enemies. Oh, what is that? Oh, that's my special move, like some sort of plant summon thing. Come on, come on. Dodge and roll. And I'll beat that thing up. I still think that would have been pretty cool design for Ben to have. The cactus thing. That is a pretty cool looking design. I kind of wish that one was in the show. Because sometimes, every now and then, these Ben 10 game designers do something right. I'd say that design is one of those things. And that's the end of the beat em up introduced to Wildvine level. So let's get a move on. Good job, Ben. Let's get back on the road. Wow, they're not even trying with the cutscenes anymore, jeez. Anyway, that was Yellowstone National Park, I suppose. Could have done a lot more with that. Next up, the Effigy Mounds. Don't know what that is, but I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.